Hey guys, this is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models, but today I'm not going to build a Gundam model. As a matter of fact, today I'm going to do a new series of um, video builds, um, just making model kits. And I've been this is something that I wanted to do for a very long time. And I'm going to begin with something simple, something small and something that I've always wanted to do for a very very long time so first off let me show you the model kit this is the 1700 scale USS the Sullivan's DD 537 by Trumpeter I've had this kit for a long time and there was a time where I was building it putting some parts on it and then I just stopped and I put it into storage and didn't think nothing of it for a while. Now I have collected model ships before and um, if it wasn't for Yamato I would have been working on these model ships. Uh, Space Battle Ship Yamato that is. And the reasons why I'm now going back to building ships is because I'm going back to the basics. Back to a time where I remembered before Gundam, before Space Battleship Yamato, aka uh, Star Blazers, there was just regular model ships. I remember as a kid building ships like um, the USS Arizona or the Missouri or the or or, or the Hood. Well, I actually don't remember I think building the Hood because I'm thinking of kits that were at the time available to me by the company Ravel. And Ravel at the time had Arizona, had Missouri had the Kitty Hawk, I remember that one. I remember building the Midway. Um, usually it's a mixture of both World War II and modern, well, at the time, back then, modern ships of the line. Never got a chance to build like destroyers or cruisers. Those were things that you don't normally see at a, um, um, a toy store or a hobby store. Well, actually, the there was no hobby store, but more like toy stores and Toys R Us. So you build what you can, and I remember building a lot of those, including submarines. I had one submarine that I built that I'm I'm hoping that one day I will find it and revisit it and begin building that submarine again for nostalgic purposes. Because those were those were the, the model kits I grew up with that I learned how to build the basics of, and I want to do a model ship for a long, long time, and I think it's about time I start. So this video series that I'm going to be doing will not be as a lengthy video series like I've done with my Gundam kits where I do, you know, part one, part two, part three, which this will just be, you know, maybe one or two parts at the very least, beginning to end, start to finish. But I'm also going to do another thing. I'm also thinking and planning of doing a little diorama scene. I want, I've done a diorama before with my Gundams and it was not the best, you could say. But, it helped me understand and appreciate the work that many people have put into for dioramas. And I want to start doing dioramas again, but I want to start small and work my way up. Get my hands dirty. Make more mistakes. So that way, the next time I do a better diorama, it will be a lot better. And hopefully, you, know, it'll, you guys will see this firsthand. I'll start with a ship build. For a diorama, which lately I've been watching a lot of video online on uh, building uh, diorama uh, scenes uh, with ships. So let's review what I have here, and then I'm going to show you the materials that I have. Now, like I said before, I built this ship, and I was working on it a long time ago. As you can see there, there are the um, the parts that I worked on. Some of them came off, some of them I lost, but I'm going to see if I could try to recover it or find something here to replace it. But I got the overall portions of it. This is the waterline part of the ship. I could easily put this part here and put it on the base if I want to. But instead, I'm going to probably end up using this one. So it would be like, you know done. Now, I don't have it near me, and I thought I did, but I'm going to use this as a point of reference so you guys can see this. This is the little styrofoam that I have here. 
and it's, it's not the styrofoam that I'm going to use, but it's definitely the styrofoam that I will use for, the, you know, as an example. I mean, probably, if I, I have one that's about half the size, and I'm going to use it to simulate the sea and um, paint it. Um, I've purchased some things here that will help me out. The most notable part for a diorama build that you'll definitely need is white glue. I know there's another brand like um, 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 I forgot what the name is. It begins with an M um, that somebody will tell me to use, but I'm only use part of the stuff that I have with me that I need that I can use for this. But the most important part is, of course, making the effect of the water. I also purchased something else. Let me show you here. Uh, obviously, I'm, if I'm going to utilize foam, I want to also put it on a base. And I just recently picked, it, picked this up at um, Michael's for about two bucks. It's a little bendy here, but I'm going to probably put like little things here on the bottom so I can keep it, you know, level. But I'll put the foam there on top. I glue it on. I'll make the C. Then I'll put it right on top of that to simulate that. So that will be the plan. Now I picked up a lot of products to help me out, and I'm going to do the diorama thing later on. But first, I'm going to finish that. Then I'm going to utilize during the diorama build using glue and using a product that I purchased. This is called Amsterdam Heavy Gel Medium, but it's actually referred to as Talon or Talon um, Gloss. This is a gel medium that you can apply with it with a brush. It is acrylic based, and it forms a you know clear base. It'll look foamy. It look well, actually. Let me open it up. By the way, this one broke during shipping, and the owner refunded me. But I didn't lose everything, so I could still use it. So as you can see, it looks like something that you know, one of those little um, cold creams that you put on your face. But when it dries, it becomes glossy and simulates the ocean. So that is my intention to making that. Plus, I have the paints that will allow me to do this type of work on this kit. Let's have some fun and see how it looks. So let me begin assembly of the ship and see how it comes out. And we'll review it. All right. So here is the Destroyer USS Sullivan. Already uh, complete. Also very small. The length is about six and a half inches, almost around the way. same length size as a high-grade Gundam. Very good detail for its scale and size. Obviously, this is the first time I have built a model ship in a very, very, very long time. Um, well, like I mentioned before, I, I think I purchased the Ticonderoga 1/350th scale back in the mid 90s so yeah over 20 years i've been built a, a nice little model ship like this i know i started doing it a long time ago then i stopped obviously there are little holes here there are missing parts um and during the course of me building this you know parts were disappearing and i was trying to find them and uh trying to recover them and all that stuff um one part in particular is um, this little part here? I'm gonna zoom in on it. The part here that represents the Bofor guns. This is the quad Bofor guns, 40 millimeters, and this little part is missing. Um, I'm, it must have fell off from the sprue during transition, and so I was moving the box left and right, couldn't find it. Uh, other than, and I was also missing this one here. And I was like, ah, do I do I do I bail on this? But not necessarily. I'm not going to bail on this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try something here. Um, since the shape of the Bofor guns look a little weird, I took I took snippings from the rear um, from the rear assembly of the of where the propeller shafts are. I cut them. I sliced them in two. And I made this. I don't know if this is going to come out right. I know it is not because I'm waiting for this to glue, to glue to dry. Um, let 
let me just do something here. Where's my knife? Where is the knife? I just had it here a minute ago. I can just use this for now. Going to cut off that. The length is a little too long, but I can trim this. Let me just try to also trim this little part here that I'm using it as a part of design. Of course, the thing comes off completely. Actually, let me just see if I can actually put it, glue it on. Then I can trim it off. Yeah, I had to like be very careful on how to put this on. Or how I had to cut this. Uh, unlike Gundam kits where the dimensions is a little thicker and um, not... I mean, it's precise, but not completely precise. This one, precision has to be very, very... Um, almost exact to the point. And this one's not going to work because it's too wide. It won't fit that. What I'm going to probably do is shave it off using a hobby knife. To put it on. I'm not going to do that right now on, on camera so you guys can see that, but that's something I'm going to work with. But now that I'm done, I'm going to see what I can do to jury rig the section here that represents the death charges. And then I'm going to move on to assembly of, or setting up the, you know, the diorama. So give me a minute while I take care of this. Okay, the ship is now done. I was able to recover this a bit. Came out alright. Now, let's try the Dharma again. At first, I was going to use that thick piece of styrofoam, like you see right here. But I think that's a little bit too much. Um, I'm probably going to use this styrofoam for another type of diorama. But for now, I'm not going to use that one because this is a little too much. Especially since I'm going to have to cut it and put it on this guy here. And Again, not good. So I need something smaller. Fortunately, during my move and buying stuff and, and shells, I have uh, extra like little thin ones like this one right here. And I, and I cut this one to a relatively reasonable size. So it has this, all this stuff on the side that doesn't look good. So what I'll do is I'll get the plot plate and cut it to the side and glue it onto it. So that way it looks nice. But for now, we're going to put it on this, and we're going to put it in this little angle here. Like so, that way, you see everything here. I'm, going to, I'm not going to glue this to this yet, I want to try this here first. And I'm going to use a, I'm going to have a cardboard here. Oh, there it is. use this to work on it and I'm going to cut a cut this around here like that Cut out the inside of this a bit to give it a little bit of a depth in there. Uh, give me a minute here. Okay, here it is. Um, I mean, it's not completely perfect, but that's okay because we're going to put this here as a test fit to see. And there's a little gaps here, but that's no, no big deal because it's going to be filled in with all the stuff that we're going to put on it. But that's how it will look. Now, I've seen people do many different ideas on this. We're going to try my idea and see how it works. So what I'm going to do I'm going to take aluminum foil and uh, 
just going to pull it up a bit and put it in areas like so to simulate certain things. doesn't have to be completely perfect just in areas that you will think that you would want it Okay, I think this looks okay in this position, in this format. This is what I was looking at at a video. No, let me rephrase that again. Three, two, one. All right. Finished putting in where I think these will be placed on. And I'm going to now put the glue on this. I put a lot of glue on this. Now, I gotta give credit to the person who, um, sorry, I have to give credit to the person or the, the model builder that was doing this on his channel. And unfortunately, I don't have it with me, but once I finish doing this, I will get it for you guys to see. But he was doing this on his build with a submarine, a uh, 1 3 scale submarine. around it like that so I can bring it down a bit white glue is great for something like this because it will it's clear and it can mold into anyone anything you want depending on what it is I could have easily used putty because I did purchase putty last year at Hobby Link Japan but I decided to use this now I'm not done yet because I'm going to take this Go right on top of it and do that. So that way everything will stick into place like so. This actually works for my benefit here because now I can actually cut this to the sides and then cover the edges easily. There we go. 
I'll let this set in. And we'll put a little more glue in a few moments. Let's just wait it, wait for it to dry. Good thing to do is to let it dry for at least 24 hours. But then, as you can see, this will be perfect for that right here. You see? So we're gonna set that. Let that set for 24 hours. All right. So my little base is dried up with all the um, excess glue that I put on it. As you can see, it has that formation of the ocean and it's split and all that stuff. Um, but right now I'm going to prime it and I'm going to use a gray one-shot primer. Now I've never liked to use this primer because it has a weird way of uh, drying really fast. But I gave it a good mixture of acrylic uh, thinner from Tamiya. But I don't have any more from the uh, MIG ammo brand. Let's see how this works. I'm just going to do this a little quick. I've decided to use acrylic on acrylic. Not, I was going to do lacquer, but I said, no, I'm going to do this one. It'll be a lot easier this way. I mean, the one-shot primers do work, just, I guess, it, maybe my airbrush is not that very good or whatever, but if I thin it up appropriately, it'll be good. It'll come out nice. I'm going to put some plates on the side soon. Let me just make sure it's a good coverage. There we go. Alright, let's let it dry and move on to the next part.